Hello everyone and welcome back to my Enigma's Cold War tutorial series where today we're going to be looking at helicopters. Now as normal I've broken this guide down into separate sections, time cards will be down below in the description so you can skip to where you're most interested in. So the first part we're going to be looking at farps and how to find the correct farp to spawn at. Then we're going to be looking at the early warning radar system, how that interacts with helicopters, when you can and when you can't be seen. And then we're going to look at the three unique helicopter missions, which are troop drop missions, recon missions, and Caesar missions. All helicopters are in some way capable of doing at least some of these missions, but some are much better suited than others. Generally, the larger troop carrier helicopters, that is the Huey and the Mi-8, can do those missions a lot better, but then are worse at others. The Hind and the Gazelle will have less troops to do those kind of missions with, but they do have other advantages. But still, any of them can do these sort of missions. So let's get on with the video. So first up then is FARPs. Helicopters do not take off as normal at an airfield, instead they take off at unique locations called FARPs. These FARPs are found in the centre of every hexagon, marked by little white tiny circles, much smaller than most other markings on the map. You can spawn at any friendly controlled FARP, even frontline sectors, with any helicopter to do any mission. So there's no limitations there. The one trick here is it's a little bit harder to work out which ones are best to spawn at. You can simply spawn at where other helicopters are going, but the more general method is to spawn in a slot, any slot that you have access to, go to the F10 map, and then click the little orange circle in the middle of the hexagon you wish to spawn in. That will give you that sector's code. Then find the FARP that corresponds to that code, and you can load in. You're good to go. Do note there are two FARPs in each hexagon. One is blue, one is red. You don't need to worry about that, just that is the reason why there are two markers in the centre hexagons. So next up, we'll have a look at when you can be detected by early warning radar and when you can't. So the main thing here is that the early warning radar system implemented in Enigma's Cold War does not detect helicopters, no matter the range. So even if an enemy fighter is on top of you, they will not get any callouts on the automated system. You, however, do have access to the early warning radar system. You can access this through the F10 comms menu just as normal and operates exactly the same as it would for a fixed-wing aircraft. See my CAP video for more details on that. Now, one thing I do just want to point out here as it catches a lot of helicopter pilots out is that although the early warning system does ignore you, the regular in-game AWACS does detect you. And so that means the generic callouts that are going through the in-game F7 a wax menu will still detect you. Most notably, this will be for players who are flying Flaming Cliffs 3 modules. That A wax is on by default, but anyone can tune into that. And it will detect you if you are above a certain altitude and the A wax has a good view of where you are. Equally, if anybody is occupying a GCI slot on the other team, they can see any helicopters that that A wax is detecting. Your best bet at avoiding this is to remain at incredibly low altitudes, or even better, stay within valley systems so that there is no line of sight between the radar stations and your helicopter, which point you will be genuinely invisible to everyone except people looking out their window. I just like to point this out because a lot of helicopters do get very, very frustrated when they do get intercepted. It is perfectly reasonable that they may have been vectored in by JTAC or a human GCI. So next up then, let's look at the unique helicopter missions. And the main one here is troop drops. These come in two varieties, special forces and regular soldiers. They work very similarly, so I'll be covering them at the same time here. All troops are loaded in the same way. When you are on the ground, either at a friendly airfield or a friendly FARP, 
you can open the F10 comms menu and then select load troop orders. You will then be presented with a list of the troops that you can load and you can select one of the available squads there. For standard drops you select standard, for special forces select SOF. This will load a single squad of the available type into your helicopter. Each person added increases the weight of your helicopter by 100 kilograms and it will then display the remaining seats in your helicopter. You can keep doing this until your helicopter is full up and you can bring mixed groups. Once you're loaded up, fly to the intended target. For standard drops, you need to land within four kilometers of the targets you wish to destroy. Once you're landed, you go to the F10 comms menu again, select drop troop orders, and then select the troops you wish to drop doesn't really matter which you pick, at time of writing all troops are dropped off at the same time, you just need to give the order. Once you get the message that the troops have been successfully unloaded, you can then safely take off again. If those troops are still alive, three minutes after dropping they will execute their mission. Each standard squad, which consists of four men, will attack targets within four kilometers of their drop range and each squad can take out a maximum of eight units. Multiple squads dropped in the same area will just increase this. So for example, with a Huey, if you drop two squads of infantry, they will kill a maximum of 16 units within that four kilometer range. As soon as they have completed their mission, you will get a message in the top right corner alerting you of that. And at the same time, a marker will be added to the map telling you roughly where the position of that squad now is for extraction. If you fly towards that marker, once you're within a certain range, the squad will start firing flares. To retrieve the squad, simply land next to them. You do have to get quite close to them, but there is no need to actually give any orders. Simply land and stay stationary near them. They will automatically board your helicopter once again, in which case you can then just repeat the mission as many times as you like. It's also worth noting, if you do pick them up within an area where they are still near to active ground targets, you can simply immediately order them out again and they will start their mission once again. Do note that they generally don't respawn for pickup exactly where you drop them off. They are normally a short distance away, but this can vary depending on the rough terrain around where you'll drop them off. Also do note if anything happens to the squad, i.e. if they are killed before completing their mission, their mission will be a failure and you won't be able to pick them up afterwards. And finally, just note that picking them up afterwards is not a requirement. The mission is completed as soon as the three minute timer is up, they do their damage. Uh, but picking them up is a really good idea because it lets you stay in the field and continue to do damage without having to go back to base. Regular troops will attack any frontline target type that they come across, so these are the normal outpost spawns that appear near the frontline regions, however they will not attack any of the infrastructure targets such as depots and factory buildings. If you want to target depots and factory buildings, you need to bring these special forces squads instead. These come in groups of three, and the main caveat here is that you need to be within two kilometers of the target building. They will destroy one building per squad of three. Other issue here is this takes eight minutes, significantly longer than the standard troop drops. But the fact they do insta-kill a very heavily defended factory can be very useful. A little bit of a heads up here is that these infrastructure targets are normally guarded by radar SAM sites, and so that does put you at a notable risk. You can take out the SAM sites with the standard infantry drop. They will happily destroy the SAM sites, and then you can use the special forces to destroy the actual infrastructure targets. Now, one thing that's quite clear there, you do have these rather extreme range limitations and you don't really want to be waiting three minutes to find that your targets were just out of range, so recon is very important. You can rely on others to do recon, I've got a fixed wing recon uh, video up already, but helicopter recon is incredibly effective whether you're planning to do it in terms of troop drops, whether you're planning to do it to help yourself find ground targets, 
or if you're planning to do it to help your team find targets, helicopter troop drops are just as valuable as fixed wing, if not more. To carry out helicopter recon, you load up the troops exactly the same as with standard troops, you just need to load a recon squad. Recon squads consist of two troops per squad, and just as with standard ones, you can load multiple uh, recon groups together. You land and drop the recon troops in the exact same way, and just as before, they will begin carrying out their mission immediately. After a five minute timer, assuming that recon unit survives those five minutes, they will reveal any locations within the area. Any frontline troops will be detected within a 12 and a half kilometer radius. This is really quite a large radius. If you park near the middle of a certain sector front line, it will capture most things along that front line. Also, at the same time, with the same mission, they will detect infrastructure targets within 25 kilometers from where they are dropped. And both of these missions are compatible with one another, so you can detect frontline troops and infrastructure targets all at the same time with the same drop. Just as with standard troop drops, you will be alerted when they complete their mission with a message in the top right, along with a number of targets that were discovered. These targets are automatically entered on the F-10 map for everyone on your team to see, just like regular fixed ring recon. And then just like standard troop drops, you will get another marker showing where you can pick up your troops. If you fly towards that, they will begin firing signal flares. Simply land near them, wait a few seconds, and they will board. Do note that just like standard troops, you do need to be quite close to these, so it is probably worth taxiing a little bit closer to them if they don't seem to be boarding. You do need to be right next to them for the boarding to trigger. Once again, once you have picked them up, you are then free to deploy them again. In general here, you do need to move them from their location since they will just search the same 12 kilometer radius area, so you do need to move them to a new location. And again, you don't actually need to pick them up for the mission to be complete. As soon as the five minute timer expires, that is when the information is uploaded to your team. Picking them up, though, does let you repeat that mission on and on again, and so again, keeping you more active in the field. Finally, then, we have Caesar Operations, or Combat Search and Rescue. This is the action of picking up downed pilots, either friendly or enemy, in order to give your team an advantage. Every time a plane takes off, it costs your team a certain amount of attrition points. If that plane does not make it back to base, you don't get those attrition points back. However, if the pilot managed to safely eject from his aircraft, then you can recover some of that attrition point value of the plane by recovering that friendly pilot. Alternatively, you can capture enemy pilots. This has a chance to reveal infrastructure targets within the enemy airspace. Now the main challenge with Caesar is locating these pilots in the first place. Obviously if you see a parachute going down you know exactly where to land, but more often than not you won't be able to see the friendly planes going down, so for this we do have a simplified system compared to the old system of detecting downed pilots. If you're in a helicopter, then if you open up that F10 comms menu again, there is an option there to display Caesar pings. This will display a list of recently downed pilots and displaying their bearing and range from your position. Now the only disadvantage here is at the time of writing that list is not ordered, and so you do have to quickly scroll through it to see if any of those targets are particularly close to you. But once you find one that is close to you, you can simply head in that direction. And just like with the ground troop pickups, your downed pilots will start flaring as soon as any nearby helicopter approaches them. Doesn't matter whether you're enemy or friendly, and so you can very often spot enemy pilots as they will start to flare for emergency pickup as you get close. Pickup is exactly the same as with the ground troops, simply land next to the pilot and they will automatically board. You will get a message in the top right to show that they have boarded. 
do note that pilots will occasionally land in very unsuitable terrain, such as in a forest, in an orchard, or down the side of a building. Because of this, you can pick up pilots by hovering above them. Just stay in a stationary hover for about 10 seconds, and you should get that message appearing. This is meant to simulate you lowering a rope to pick up the pilot. Now your job isn't done at this point, you do then need to return that pilot to a friendly airfield or friendly FARP, doesn't matter which. If you land at those, you will then get a message saying that you have returned the pilot safely. One little note on this, because you only do succeed in this mission when you do successfully return, I tend to only conduct these missions when I am otherwise just about to RTB. For instance, if I've just done an attack run in a hind, I'm out of ammo, I will then check the nearby area for downed pilots who I can bring back with me. But there is absolutely nothing stopping you loading up for a pure Caesar operation and taking off with a very light load with the pure interest of picking up as many pilots as possible and bringing them back. Perfectly up to you. Otherwise, those are the helicopter mechanics as it currently stands. Now, helicopter mechanics have been undergoing quite a few overhauls, so this information may get outdated. If it does, I will put together a new video. As always, if you have any particular questions, please leave them down below. If it's something I can quickly answer, I will reply to it. If it's something I need to go into in a bit more depth, then I will produce a separate video to do just that. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next guide. Until then, remember to be kind to yourselves and everyone else. Cheers!